So of course, I'm sure you're familiar by now, the brand of Dossier makes inexpensive versions of more expensive designer and niche fragrances. Of course, as is the case with the brand Le Labo, which is a French brand, we have some really expensive fragrances. This is their version of Te Matcha 26, and it's called Citrus Matcha. This one is highly inexpensive, piqued my curiosity. I'm excited to be doing my video on this for you guys today, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Citrus Matcha, which is Dossier's version of Te Matcha 26 by Le Labo, I'll tell you about how close I think it is to the original, comparisons to other fragrances out there, longevity, performance, all that good stuff. But before I begin, I want to mention that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up. It would really, really mean a lot to me. So here we have a fragrance that came out not too long ago. I've always been a fan of Te Noir 29. That's a great black tea type of a fragrance from Le Labo. Tea is a very calming, grounding, serene, meditative note for me. And of course, it's no exception here. I love consuming matcha tea with the polyphenols and the superoxide dismutate. There's just so many health benefits to consuming green tea or any tea from the Camellia sinensis plant, whether it's white, black, green, or oolong. I'm quite a tea fanatic here, but here we have a tea based fragrance and I'm super excited to give you my thoughts on this dossier version of it. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. Now, right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this robust citrus personality. And the citrus comes across rather organic, very fresh, very uplifting. You know, in a lot of designer fragrances, you get a little bit of citrol or citrol citronellol or linalool, or a lot of these aroma molecules that give it a bit of a citrusy touch, but it's quite nondescript. But here you're really getting that bright, vivid nature of the citrus. And one thing I love about Dossier products is that they have the transparency of the card that delineates a percentage. In this case, it's 20%, but they also have the note breakdown, which makes it really easy for you as a consumer if you're trying to digest, well, what is it that I'm smelling exactly? In the top, bitter orange and bergamot, those are going to be the predominant citrus notes, bitter orange and bergamot. In the heart, you have matcha tea, the namesake of the perfume, but in French, fig and vetiver. And of course, fig is a fantasy note. We'll get into that. And then in the base, you have cedarwood and musk. So you do get that bergamot introduction. It's very fresh, very inviting, very bright, very ethereal, but then you're also going to get that creamy lactonic nature in the heart. That's coming from the fig. So a lot of times when fig is listed in the note breakdown, it's usually associated with aroma molecules that come from coconut. Sometimes the same ingredients that go into creating a coconut accord also create a fig accord. And I remember even the original Marc Jacobs for Men, which was rectangular in shape and it had the bulky black cap, that one has fig leaf in it, but it always smelled like coconut to me. And I wondered why. And it wasn't until a few years later when I started doing a deep dive into, you know, some of the behind the scenes of the perfume industry. That's when I learned that, well, you know, fig is a fantasy note in perfume. So this one does indeed contain that lactonic presence in the heart. And of course, with that musky base, it's a perfect pairing to that creaminess that you get in the heart. The matcha tea, you get it right away. And of course, it's a very different personality from Te Noir 29. That fragrance is more on the dry herbal side of things. This is on the creamy lactonic fresh side of things. Now, Dossier's version, how close do I think it is? It's pretty darn close. I have a sample of the Le Labo counterpart. I've been sampling it for a very long time now. Of course, with every Dossier that I've tried of Le Labo inspirations, whether it be Rose 31, Bergamot 22, Gaillac 10, and I have quite a number of them and I've reviewed quite a number of them. They've all come back to the same conclusion. Dossier gets it right. They use a process called gas chromatography or mass spectrometry, which is how they reverse engineer the fragrance. The lab analysis that it spits out tells them exactly what ingredients to put into it. For as long as a company has access to these raw materials, they can always put it into the system and the robot dispenses it from the vats into the aluminum canister and then everything gets macerated and boom, you have a nearly identical product. Unless we're 
we're dealing with the case of something known as captive molecules, which are ingredients in the perfume industry that not everybody has access to, but people find a way to access them even though they don't have access to them on paper. But nevertheless, guys, this smells very similar to the Le Labo counterpart. And I'm just going off of the olfactive landscape that I have in my mind and in my memory and what I can gather from my experience of dealing with this fragrance. So try it for yourself, citrus matcha, incredibly inexpensive, especially for the quality, the percentage, and what you're getting from the olfactory profile. All of the links are gonna be down below, not affiliate links. I'm not making commission on you purchasing this product or sampling it or anything like that. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, well, of course, this is not a unique fragrance for the simple fact that it's an inspiration of a more popular niche fragrance, but they got it very, very close. It's a very pleasant smell. It doesn't push any boundaries like, you know, Patchouli 24 or Oud 27 or Vetiver 46 or Poif 23. Those are some of the darker fragrances from the brand. This one is very easy going, very carefree. Longevity is going to give you about eight hours on skin. Projection was wonderful for the first hour of application. It radiated just a little bit beyond an arm's length. It became an elbows length scent right around hour six and a half or seven, a skin scent right around hour nine or 10, depending on your skin chemistry. And in terms of the versatility of this fragrance, perfectly unisex, great for the hotter weather, I would say, great for formal or casual scenarios. Anybody of any age can enjoy this one as well. As far as the presentation goes, I've reviewed many a dossier fragrance on this channel, so you already know my thoughts regarding that. Pretty simple cardboard construction. I love the magnetic cap, but all of these factors keep the costs low. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you're looking for a highly affordable and inexpensive alternative to Te Matcha 26 by, I always forget the number, so I have to remind myself, Te Matcha 26 by Le Labo, definitely check out Citrus Matcha by Dossier. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you took something of value from today's episode. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode.